Hey guys, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Hey, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone for watching these videos, for subscribing. Um, it's really cool to have that kind of interest, and I'm happy to showcase and share my collection with you, along with the tips that I've picked up over 10 plus years of collecting. So it's been quite an honor, and I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys have any questions about collecting in general, I'd appreciate seeing what you think in the comments down below. And today, we're going to be showcasing one of my favorite sets. And this set is actually on fire right now. It's a very difficult to acquire set. And I'm still missing a couple of them personally. Uh, it's been 10 years in the making though. So this is the Neo Genesis set from 2000, Wizards of the Coast, first edition, most of which are in PSA 10. However, there's still a couple of them that have eluded me after all this time. So let's get into this and take a look at some of the cards that make up the Neo Genesis set. First up, we've got Ampharos. Now, Ampharos is a really cool Pokemon. It was one of the uh, stage two evolutions of the Neo sets. And uh, this one is actually a pretty easy one to grade. It's all the dark holofoil. And usually those darker holofoil background cards are significantly easier when it comes to grading. Yeah, so Ampharos coming in with 163 copies in PSA 10. Again, it's one of the easier cards to grade in the set. It's one that I like. And I don't know why, but I've always been personally partial to the electric Pokemon um, throughout the sets and through the Game Boy games. Next up, we've got Azumarill, or Azumarill as some call them. Now this card is actually very difficult to acquire in a PSA 10. It's a very, very difficult grade. And again, it has to do with the coloring of the holographic pattern. A lot of these cards in Neo Genesis had really poor print production. And so they come with factory scratches straight out of the pack, print lines, and those are really the death sentence when it comes to PSA grading. Yeah, so this is exactly what I expected. The Azumarill is 30. 30 copies in a PSA 10, and if you think about it, we're talking worldwide, a card that's been graded numerous times by people that are pursuing this set. And I know there's a lot of set collectors out there like myself that are actively seeking this card, and there's not a lot of data points. I mean, these only come up for sale once a year, maybe twice a year. Yeah, so it's looking like back we have to go all the way back to 2018 to get a new data point since the last sale in september for two thousand dollars taking a look at our next card we've got another easier card to grade at least i think this is one of the easier ones and this is blossom so blossom was one of the alternate uh evolution cards that was featured in the second generation you had cards like polytoad being the alternate evolution of polyrath and in this case blossom is the alternate evolution of Gloom going into, you know, Vile Plume or possibly Bellossom. So first appearance of this card, pretty cool one. Um, nothing overly special about it. This isn't one of the big heavy hitters of the set. Next up, we've got one of the starters. This is for Alligator. And interestingly, the Neo Genesis set is the only one that I can think of that featured two different holographic versions of each of one of, of each of the starters in the set. So you get two for alligators, two Typhlosions, two Meganiums. And uh, this one is the easier of the two to grade. Again, it has the darker holographic background. Still worth a decent amount of money though, because these starters, second generation starters even, uh, command a hefty premium just because of the iconic nature that they hold within the hobby. Next up is actually my favorite card from the set. Uh, from my understanding, it was highly playable in League. This was about the time that the league I ran closed down, so I never really got the opportunity to make a deck uh, for this. This is the part of my collecting where I turn more collector and less of a player of the game. But for Alligator number five, one of the most difficult cards to acquire in a PSA 10, and you'll see why in a second, it's that, that light holographic foil pattern. Makes this card extremely difficult to grade. But what a beauty. Holofoil just jumps off the card on this one. Yeah, this is the number five. Even as a card, I think like the artwork on this one is more aggressive. And uh, in that way, I think this is the superior card just, just because of the artwork. But as you'll see here in a second, this card is extremely low population and you just don't see these come up for sale like ever. All right, here we go. Population of 18. That's only 18 copies in the whole world in PSA 10. I know that's gonna throw a wrench into a lot of set collectors that are looking at completing the holo set. And unfortunately, there's cards that are even lower population than this one 
that are just impossible to find. In fact, if we're looking at the sales data here, there's nothing. There hasn't been one sold, at least publicly, uh, on eBay or at least on the sales data provided here in years. And so that cost of opportunity was something we talked about in my previous video um, about long-term investments. And a lot of these low population cards that just don't exist are gonna command a high premium just because that cost of opportunity. You never have the opportunity to acquire something you need and a bunch of other collectors need it as well. That sort of organic competition is going to lead to value. Next up, we have another card that's very difficult to find in a PSA 10. And actually, this is one of the cards that I'm missing from my set is Heracross. Now, Heracross is not what I would consider one of the more desirable cards, uh, or Pokemon, I should say, in the Neo Genesis set. But this card is extremely difficult to grade, extremely difficult to find, much like the Fur Alligator we just looked at. It's kind of cool, you can see him squaring off with Pinsir. Um, so we get that like first generation, second generation showdown. So here we go. This story is going to start to sound very familiar, but extremely low population. This card is only a population of 15, and I know that I'm looking for it still. I know that TCA Gaming um, still needs one of these. There's a bunch of people on the PSA registry that are working on complete sets, and this is one of the cards that really complicates the process. It's, it's a diamond. It really is. It's tough to find. Um, looking at the prices again, there's just no data. When you have these low population cards, it's really a seller's market because where's the cheaper option? I've heard Scott say that on his channel a number of times, SM Pratt, shout out to him. He's probably the best collector in the game, most knowledgeable person on YouTube, in my opinion. Um, but where is the cheaper option? These cards just don't exist. Next up, we have another Pokemon that is uh, unique to generation two, and that's Jumpluff. So Jumpluff is another stage two evolution. Uh, it's not one that I would think of as iconic when we're thinking about the Neo sets, and there are so many great Pokemon from the Neo sets. I think Jumpluff gets swept under the radar sometimes, swept under the rug, kind of mixing my metaphors. Uh, it's still a really beautiful card though. And the backside again is, is flawless. That's what you expect with these PSA 10s. That's why, that's why they sell for a premium. All right, so once again, I'm surprised here. Only a population of 30. And even if we compare the proportion of nines to tens, seeing this type of lopsidedness where there's almost 10 times as many graded in a nine, and when you factor in the eights and the other lower grades, that's just a testament to how difficult some of these cards are to grade. Populations can change, certainly, but when we look at the availability, raw cards, ungraded cards, the proportion of tens to nines, those are all data points that can help us make an educated, informed decision. Next up, we've got Kingdra. So originally, Horsey evolved into Cedra, and Cedra seemed to be the final evolution form of Horsey, but then Neo came along and gave us Kingdra, a stage two evolution. And this is really a gorgeous card. It's weird that to think of Kingdra as a dragon Pokemon. I think I've seen Kingdra classified that way. Um, it just it seems more like just this like little water pip squeak to me, but uh, still a really cool card. All right, next up we have the big one, and the big news from the last month of Pokemon collecting was PSA 10 Lugia going for auction on PWCC, reaching a record price of $129,000, and that was actually paid for. So there was some speculation that maybe it was a shill bid or maybe it wasn't paid for. Uh, but it's my understanding that that card was processed, purchased, and paid. And uh, I'm really happy to have one of those in my collection because I never expected the prices to get to the point that they're currently at. It's, it's wild. It's wild what Pokemon has done over the years. So here he is. This is the centerpiece of the Neo Genesis collection. This is the PSA 10 first edition Lugia. And it makes perfect sense why a card like this would command such a premium. It's one of the most iconic Pokemon in the entire franchise. It's featured in the movie, Pokemon 2000. Uh, it's on the Game Boy games. More importantly, it's a very difficult card to grade. With all of the holographic surface, with it being lighter color, very susceptible to printing issues, to hollow scratching. And this card just really is a beauty. So once again, looking at our population report, population of 41 with over a thousand copies graded. That just shows you how difficult this, this card is to grade. 
And uh, if we look at our population report, our prices here, here it is. This is the one that really went off the market was that $129,000 sale with PWCC just a few weeks ago. It was extraordinary. And uh, one of the things that's interesting is how much that these lower graded items are commanding a premium on their own, like sevens, eights, even sixes are approaching four figures. And again, it's because of how iconic that card is. I think when it comes down to it, scarcity is one of the best factors for determining long-term value or stability might be the better word of the value of a card. But popularity does play a role. And here's one example of where popularity is able to carry pretty high prices, pretty high premiums, because it's not very often that you'll see a grade of a six or a seven uh, earn a six figure, a six figure, uh, earn a four figure price tag. Next up, we have another one of the lowest population cards in the set, and it happens to be one of the starters. This is Meganium, and Meganium number 10, again, there's two of them. There's a number 10 and a number 11. Number 10 is another one of those cards that's ridiculously difficult to grade and therefore ridiculously hard to find. So once again, our trend continues. 17 copies in a PSA 10, vastly outweighing the other copies that are graded. It's less than 10% of them uh, reach that 10 threshold. And you got to consider that people are sending in the best of the best copies for grading. They're not sending in used played versions of this card. Uh, if we go down to look at our pricing details, just one blip on the radar from 2017. These cards just don't come for sale. And again, that's part of the appeal of it. As you can see, some of the lower grades on these starters do really well as two, uh, like nines in the $400 range, eights can be in the $300 range. We saw some nines earlier in the five, $600. That's a really solid price point for a card that's a nine. For those of you that didn't know this, the Neo sets were in an era when Pokemon didn't have its same level of popularity. And so the Neo sets weren't printed as extensively as some of those earlier sets like Jungle and Fossil and even the Gym series, and Team Rocket. Next up, we have the second of the two Meganiums, and this one is Meganium number 11. This one is definitely more friendly, just got his mouth open. He's like, hey, what's up? Want to go do some Solar Beam? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, still a really cool card, though. The difference between the two that makes this one easier to grade again, though, is that darker holographic background. It's less susceptible to those print lines. So with more than triple the population of Meganium number 10, uh, clearly Meganium number 11 is the easier grade. Nevertheless, we do have some sales here and the sales trends are looking pretty strong. This set is climbing. Granted, this was in the heat of the Pokemon surge back in October and November, but still we're not seeing the same kind of retrace on some of these PSA 10s in the Neo sets like we're seeing in the earlier sets. And I think, again, it has to do with the, the scarcity of these items versus their earlier set counterparts. As far as prices, looks like we got a couple in the $1,500, maybe $2,000 realm, uh, somewhere in that area. And even the nines are doing pretty well at 600, 400. You know, there's gonna be some fluctuation there. Markets change, uh, but still, Pretty strong prices considering all the factors. Next up, we have another card that's really difficult to find and one that I know a lot of people love. And you know, when we think about Pikachu being the mascot of the Pokemon franchise, you can't leave out Pichu, the baby form of Pikachu. And that's one of the unique pieces of Neo Genesis was it released the baby forms of numerous Pokemon, Pikachu being one of them with Pichu. And this is another card that's incredibly difficult to grade. And I would argue that it's one of the most beautiful cards in the set, especially with the juxtaposition of the red and the blue holofoil background. So good. Again, really clean backside to these cards. And these have been with me for a really long time. I've already mentioned this. I've been working on this set for over 10 years. Uh, some of them I had in my personal collection, some were from collections that I bought. Uh, a lot of them I've graded myself, but it's not like these are the only ones that I sent. I've sent multiple copies of these different cards, and a lot of them have gotten eights over the years, even got some nines over the years. Has some of those in my collection, some of those I've sold, but it's always the tens that I've been in pursuit of. I've been on the heels of Zach, Gem Mint Pokemon. He inspired me to aim for PSA 10 sets, and I know he actually has this complete holofoil set, whereas I'm missing a few. So Zach, you're a tough act to follow, man. 
Pichu currently has a population of 24 and not a lot of sales data recently. Now I did hear about a sale for one of these that was confirmed and I believe it was for $8,000. I'm not positive about that, that's just what I've heard. Um, and it doesn't really surprise me given how difficult they are to find and how Pokemon's been trending in the last year. But if we go back to 2019, sitting at $600 and to me, I think that was definitely undervalued at the time, uh, given that there's only 24 copies. And as we look at the market right now, nines are going for about that price pretty consistently here, even going into December. So very difficult card to find, to acquire, and darn near impossible in PSA 10. Next up, we have a steel Pokemon, Skarmory. Skarmory, I, I always thought was cool. There were two steel Pokemon released in the set. One was Skarmory, one was Steelix, which you'll see in a second. It's got the light beam coming in, which is kind of a cool way to set up the artwork. Skarmory has a population of 40, so a little bit easier to grade. But again, anything in the double digits is pretty low. And prices, not a lot recently. It looks like a couple around 1,000 back in uh, November. And I always like the Steel Pokemon. I think the idea of introducing the Darkness Energy type and the Steel Energy type was really awesome. And again, that's just one more thing that was done in the Neo sets. That's why a lot of people are really drawn to the Neo sets. The Neo sets did some unique things for Pokemon that hadn't been seen previously. The baby Pokemon, an entire new generation of Pokemon, the uh, new energy types. It was a very innovative set. Next up, we have the second card that I'm missing in PSA 10, and that's Slowking. Now this was a very playable card, and you pair that with how easy the hollow is on this one to scratch or the factory print lines and imperfections, and that just makes the perfect storm of a tough grade. This card is darn near impossible to find. I've been searching for about a decade, and I think I've only seen two copies come up for sale in that time. It's not fair. It's just really not fair. There are only 10 copies in the entire world in PSA 10. That means there could only be, at most, 10 first edition PSA 10 sets out there. I know there are a couple of complete sets. Uh, mine is missing this one. We go down to look at the data. It just doesn't exist. There was one copy sold way back in 2017, and even then that was a really high price point comparatively to the time period. Because of the non-existence of 10s, we see that the 9s are valued a little more highly. Uh, an auction in November for $560. Pretty solid price point for a PSA 9. However, that's our only data point going back a couple of months. So even the 9 is a difficult to find card. Next up, we've got Steelix. And of the Steel Pokemon, this one was my favorite. Uh, I really like the look of Steelix. I was kind of a fan of Onyx too. I mean, who doesn't like a giant rock snake? Now Steelix gets his upgrade to his steel plated armor. So he's not just a rock snake, but a steel rock snake thing. This one's an easier grade. Again, the darker hollow foil makes it less susceptible to those print lines. Next up, we've got Togetic or Togetic. I call it Togetic. Uh, Togetic's really cool. Togepi was featured pretty heavily on the anime. It's Misty's Pokemon. She cared for it much like a child. So Togetic is the evolution. I think we were all curious about that when the first clips of the Japanese anime were released in the United States. And we're like, what are these new Pokemon? And so we get Togetic in the Neo series. Next up is the most difficult of all the Neo Genesis cards to find and to grade, and that's Typhlosion number 17. He's the living meme. It's, it's impossible. Now, I have a Typhlosion in a PSA 9, and this card I have been after ever since the beginning, and it's, it's impossible. I'm just going to tell you guys, it's, it's impossible. You'll see that in a second with the population report, and props to the couple of people out there like Gem Mint Pokemon that have a copy. TCA Gaming, I think, picked one up for what I think is a good price, actually. I think that was a big brain move. Beautiful card, and just, I've already told you, it's impossible. It's impossible to grade. Typhlosion 17, a population of nine. Think about that. Here we have a set card, a set card printed in mass production and distributed across the world with a population in the single digits. That's unfathomable to me. And I've already 
kind of given up hope that I'm ever going to find this card at a reasonable cost because it's just not for sale. We have one public sale, and I believe this was to TCA Gaming, back a year ago before the Pokemon boom at $10,000. People thought that was an incredibly high price. I remember people discussing it, talking about how, how insane of a price that was, this landmark price for a set card. I thought it was a good price, actually. I think I, I've looked at it and I went, I see what you did there, TCA Gaming. That's a solid investment. Even if we look at the PSA 9s, we're seeing this growing trend because to have only 152 copies in PSA 9 is a really low number for PSA 9s. So $6,000, $6,000, 5,500. That's for a 9, for a set card. It's a hard one to find. I feel like that's the theme of this video. It's a hard one to find. Maybe that's what I should title it. Neo Genesis, it's a hard one to find. One that's not quite as hard to find is Typhlosion number 18. However, it is still a starter and it's going to command a lot of popularity and a premium just by nature of uh, what it is. And it's a really cool card with really great artwork. That flame holofoil background is, is amazing. It really pops off the card and uh, Typhlosion's in attack stance. and really clean backs on these cards. And lastly is the hollow that people sometimes forget about, but it can make or break a hollow set because this is another one that's really difficult to find, and that's the metal energy. Now the metal energy has a lot of hollow foil surface and it's really light, so that makes this card extremely difficult to grade. Not as hard as a couple of the other ones in the set, but again, it does follow that trend of being extremely hard to find and to grade. So Metal Energy with a population of 17, and again, in my mind, anything that has a population in the double digits is a solid buy, especially if we're talking vintage sets that have been graded extensively. Um, and we see that upward trend for the most part going on for this card. Uh, again, it's not as desirable as some of the other cards in the set. It's not a Pokemon. It's not a starter. It's just an energy. But even there, we're looking at most recent sale of $2,800. Uh, looked like there was another one on here for $2,250. So those low population cards, those scarce items, they're going to command the premium. That's one of the most basic fundamentals of the hobby. Anyway, guys, that's my Neo Genesis set that I've been working on. I'm happy to share that with you. It's still a work in progress, and it's one that's been a, a joy in the making, but one that's been incredibly difficult. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I'm interested to know what your guys' favorite card is from the Neo Genesis set. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Feraligator number five. Uh, that one to me is the most, the most memorable. Um, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Anyway, I'm Pokemon Classics, reminding you guys that the classics never go out of style. And until next time, take care of yourselves, everybody. See you later.